You're now listening to the Something Good Podcast Network. Please press any key to continue. Everybody and welcome to this week's edition of the Couch Bro Tatoes. I'm Alex. No cap. No cap. But we got Morrison in every fucking episode. That's right, baby. And we're gonna be digging on it. We we saw the new season four of Stranger Things. Two parts yeah. are gonna be coming out, and they kind of reignited the excitement. We watched that trailer, and it was like, "Fuck it, let's watch season three trailer," even though we already saw yeah. it. <laughs> let's, crank some jer- it- let's crank some journey, man. It can't get here fast <laughs> enough, brother. No, that was a show that really caught me by surprise. Yeah, because you caught it on uh, after like season two or three came out. I caught it by the time season three had already come out okay. I, I am a very late bloomer to that my ex taught me into watching it and it's mm-hmm. like i was not really interested in seeing it because i don't know it feels like the things that i do like maybe outside of star wars and marvel those are probably the only two main um i'd say pop culture things that i really kind of fall into and are interested in so it's like my horror is kind of offbeat you know, mm-hmm. I like my pulpy horror. I like yeah. my classic horror. So when your I was, Frankenstein's, your Wolfman's, yeah. So when I saw that this was going to be a thing, I was kind of interested. And then when I saw it blow up as much as it did, the part of my brain went, "Okay, this is another Walking Dead situation. If it's appealed to this much of a mass audience, I'm probably not going to like it." Mm-hmm. And that's why I stayed away from it for the longest time, is because it felt like it was too popular. And if it was too popular, it wasn't going to resonate with me. I think I think the thing about what it became so popular was it hit at a good time, um, because I believe, like when it first came out, it was 2016. Yeah. All right. So we had a great great run of nostalgia shows coming out. A lot of a lot of Netflix stuff is booming. Uh, they had just acquired The Walking Dead, I believe, in 2015. Uh, now. I remember watching. I remember it was October thirty first of two thousand nine of when Walk, Walking Dead premiered. Yeah, uh, and I was a fan. After oh, yeah. season two, I was done. I, I wasn't done after season it was, three because it was a soap opera. The thing about Stranger Things is, it feels like what the 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 ambiance, the vibe. It feels like if Steven Spielberg had got the rights to do a Stephen King story. Yeah, I that's, fully agree. That, that's that's the whole vibe. That's what I went into it after watching that first episode. I'm like, okay, it's got it's got a horror vibe of almost like it or Pet Cemetery or Firestarter or something like that. And I'm like, and it feels like a Steven Spielberg kind of movie, you know, especially when him going out of his way when he did like Super Eight. Yeah, uh, which was a uh, that was a fucking weird movie. Yeah, dude. but but it, it, get, it goes back to like had an ET kind of feel, and this is what this does too. You know, a gang of children figuring shit out yeah and and we'll get into the kids and everything but yeah it, it, i kind of had the same similar mm-hmm. experience it's like well i was finally because you know how you know women and exes can talk you into you know doing watching tv shows and well, stuff i hope you stuff. bury that one guy so. <laughs> yeah so i you know <laughs> but no so it's like you know she was just like watch it with me watch it with me I'm like okay fine so it was like we finally watch it and dude seriously after the second episode i kind of turned to her i was like we're binging this today you know this right she's like oh boy here we go and it's like we did it's like we watched like the first two seasons in one weekend Mm -hmm. and then like a few months later we finally watched season three and you know not to get ahead of it but it's like at the end of season three i was like no because of the Mm -hmm. big thing that happens with a main character and she's like hold on a second and played me the comic-con reveal of him being alive Mm -hmm. and i was like yes She's like, yeah, no, you had to, you had to wait thirty seconds. I had to wait a year or two to see that asshole. <laughs> and I think you know, with these kids being virtually unknown, mm-hmm. adds to it. I don't remember seeing these kids in much of anything. No, the I only- think they all had just kind of small roles and had like theater mm-hmm. acting experience, like in their own local cities the and major people, cities next to it. The only people I recognize was David Harbor, 
uh, Winona Ryder, uh, and uh, Matthew, uh, I think Matthew Modine later on. But yeah, the adults. Yeah, and even then, some of them adults were character actors in television. Mm-hmm. But they 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 give off that vibe though, like they they were made for this one role. And Winona Ryder just kicks ass. Oh yeah, throughout she, the entire she's series. A highlight. But when I saw that, that's what caught my eye when I first saw the trailer. I'm like, holy shit, it's Renona Ryder. I haven't seen her for years. Yeah. And anything, it's David Harbour. David Harbour is, all right, he's, he's been in some different stuff before this. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, dude, fucking skyrocketed. Oh, yeah. And goddamn popularity. All of them. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And, and the kids did a, fin- a fantastic job because, mm-hmm. uh, was it Millie Bobby Brown that plays mm-hmm. Eleven? Yeah. Yeah. Skyrocketed her into superstardom. She just started doing voiceover roles and other mm-hmm. action stuff. She was stuff. in the uh, latest two Godzilla movies, mm-hmm. King of All Monsters and uh, Kong versus Godzilla. Yep. No, so again, tremendous show that skyrocketed a bunch of careers. And, and the thing is, is... I think we've also kind of side note. I feel like we've also reached a point in society Mm -hmm. um, where we don't fear the child actor syndrome as much anymore. No, because we because it almost is like outside of, you know, the obvious predators that are unfortunately Mm -hmm. still within the community. Mm -hmm. Um, Outside of that, the access to drugs and alcohol may still be there, but there's a lot more awareness and knowledge to it to where a lot of these kids are like, yeah, no, I know where this is going to go. I've seen it before. When I first saw, uh, so there's the kids, but there's the teenagers too. Right. Never really seen them in anything, but did you get like an Ed Furlong vibe off the brother? Of of the, the older son of yeah you know like, I can when I first see that. Started, I'm like that's not in Furlong but god damn they thought they found the perfect motherfucker that looks like him mm-hmm. and I'm just like he gave off that Terminator two vibe I'm just like hell yeah man and and, uh, and, and to of course not get anyone in trouble uh, I have a friend what you know they do a lot of filming in Atlanta and mm-hmm. I've got friends in Atlanta and one of them was telling me they're like yeah anytime the kids are down there they're like I think she said like in season two or three she made friends with one of the kids. Mm-hmm. And that anytime they're in town, he actually sends them the message of being like, hey, want to hang out and shit? She's like, they never changed. So it's yeah. like, that's also something kind of really cool to hear. It's like, even after they got the crazy superstar mm-hmm. on there, just like, no, we, we still just like like making shows and we're having fun. We're yeah. making make believe. But no, show absolutely blew me away. The, this was 10 out of 10 awesomeness. So uh, do we just want to go ahead and into the episodes or do we want to discuss the kids at all? Well, we can do a little bit of background. So this is in yeah. Indiana, mm-hmm. Midwestern America, the everywhere state. Yep. It is, the Midwestern America are the everywhere states. They have a little bit of everything, you know, and it reminds you of, like, the blandness of storytelling. Middle America type Middle shit. America, and it, and it works great. It's not Ohio. It's not Kansas. You know, it's it's Indiana. Yeah. Nothing. Home of Hoosiers. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And it's 1983. Uh, they're in a place called Hawkins. Yep. Another mainstay, middle of nowhere fucking name for a town, like Johnston City or something. You know, something like that would be their big city. Yeah. Johnston City or something, Mount something. You know, that's it. You know, it's the Mayberry of the Midwest. It's mm-hmm. it's, it's an everywhere. They had a school. It looks like John Hughes kind of painted the picture of if this. If John Hughes went horror. Yeah. <laughs> but it, you can say John Hughes, the producer, written by Stephen King, directed by Steven Spielberg. Yeah. And you're just like, oh my fucking God. <laughs> like, <laughs> take my money now. Take my money. Give me the season DVD. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll drive to Atlanta get it signed. I don't give a fuck. But like, they, even get that, they even get that weird, like, it, you see it when we did the action park mm-hmm. thing, that, that small town Everyone goes to the school. The school's probably like K through 12 or some shit. Because remember, all the kids go to the same school. Yep. Uh, population's kind of small. It's a niche group of people. There's the rumor mill. There's the, you know, it's 1983. And they start getting more modern 80s later on in a few seasons down the road. Yeah. And, but it's still just a couple of kids, tight knit group. 
and, and, and you can and argue, you can kids. argue they grow up to be the guys from tag <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is is like they did the kids really well too because it's mm-hmm. like i can pull from a little bit of real life and draw comparison i lived my uh, childhood years in gaffney south carolina mm-hmm. bumpkin middle of nowhere yeah. kind of town home of the peach way yeah and so it's like th- their city and their town was not very modern either mm-hmm. there was still a lot of classic way of doing things kids still went outside kids still rode their bikes there was still kind of a classic hometown vibe that they're kind of portraying in this 80s kind of premise so i i can even pull from a little bit of that experience and look at it and be like damn there, there's a bit of you and know you, and you can here. with all four kids not not counting 11 but all four kids being pillars of growing up yeah you know and they diversify later on yep. because you More have come to the fray yeah but you also have uh the black kid he's got a younger sister mm-hmm. okay now you can you know a younger sibling uh the main character he's got an older sister mm-hmm. you know girls can you know go down that path and seeing themselves in either the sister or her best friend yeah you know that you see the clicks in the high school you see the clicks in school you see you know overall a progress between all four and you're you're watching this like what the fuck if you're a little guy growing up you can sympathize with will the main character mm-hmm. or if you're kind of a protector in the group you can sympathize with the other guy the one that ends up with 11 yeah but i think we all sympathize with the dude with no teeth <laughs> <laughs> And that's what I've struggled with. I'm trying to remember all their names. Yeah, Will. Uh, Will Byers. Uh, Will Byers is the younger kid. Yeah. Um, uh, Jonathan Byers is the uh, older brother. I, I liked him more than any other character. Really? Yes, he was my he was my mainstay character. Out of the kids or just all the characters? Out of all the characters, the older brother of Will seemed like the one who just... God damn, dude. Yeah. And I, there are some like fan favorites. I'm not knocking them. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's so much growth throughout the whole fucking series, with all of them. Even the racist Red Ranger guy that shows up later <laughs> on. But, <laughs> but it, it really goes good because we, because we're introduced to Mike, Dustin, mm-hmm. Lucas, and Will. I'll, out of the kids, I like Dustin. Mm-hmm. But honestly, out of all the characters, Jim Hopper, Jim, he was my. F- favorite out of although uh, by the time we get to season three i do have some problems because i feel like they didn't write him consistent by season three but seasons one and two jim hopper the absolute goat of the series Mm -hmm. talk about a man that will run into the face of trouble all for some random woman that he's known for how many years not that long he's only known joyce for just a little bit yeah 11 he's only known for a little bit Uh uh-huh so it's like all of a sudden now he's running into like the face of demons and trouble just for these this random family and then he of course you know gets the connection with 11 so it's like he has just proven himself to be a Tier S character. I don't. I don't remember if if you remember the original trailer for this, but it was one of the few trailers that I really liked watching just because of how vague it was. Mm-hmm. You don't know what you know. It's probably a thriller. It's a mystery. It's going to be scary. You know, it's going to hit those three pillars. Pillars, but you're not sure what. All right. Yeah. Say so like, go, let's go to the first episode, which kind of it kind of kicks off great because they're playing fucking D and D. The resurgence has already happened. Twenty sixteen, you know, even now today, you know, D and D's back. You know, it's it's tip top, fucking nerd get, nerdgasm. You know, well, see, real quick, I feel like correct me if I'm wrong. In the very first scene of this movie, a death or, or a series of death. Well, it's Will. No, because remember there was that because that was my ongoing joke I had for a little bit about the show being like I thought the girl with the glasses that got killed at the very first episode was going to be a she play- get, she, get, she gets killed in like episode three. Oh, was it episode three? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought that kicked off episode one, and it was just like "fuck you, murder," yeah. and it was just. And that, I remember just kind of, the episode three may have been where we stopped for the night, and I was just like, "Oh shit, the, she's gonna like play a major role." Yeah. And like the next day, we picked up another episode, but, and I was uh, like, "No one gives a fuck about this girl anymore." Yeah. And, <laughs> Sorry, and but like episode one, you know, they're playing D and D. Now, if people don't know, this is a group based game, blah blah blah. But wheel. Will's the one that comes out on top. Uh-huh. Will is considered but like the youngest 
smallest member of the group. Yeah. Right. He's he's not as strong. He's not you know he doesn't have a family life that's consistent. He's the poor kid who lives in the woods. Yeah. And I fucking love that opener. Mm-hmm. And it gave me the vibe of oh my god like all right so the the episode is very concise very mm-hmm. quickly um mike they all they, they win the game they they finish their run yep right one last you know death saving throw people who listen to dungeons and dragons know what i'm saying yeah. but uh <laughs> and they win it game over all right they're all leaving they're all going out uh, you see Dustin and Lucas and Will, they're on their bikes. Hey, man, we'll see you tomorrow. See you on the next go around. Yeah. And that right there gave me the fucking most eerie vibe I haven't had since like being in a horror movie or being in a the movie theater watching a horror movie. Really? Because it gave me that vibe of now I really don't know what's going to happen. Oh. Because the trailer was so vague. Uh-huh. It wasn't like the Star Wars stuff where we see all the good shit. It was so vague. I thought the whole series was going to be about a child murder. Mm. I thought a guy was going to show up. He's going to kill that kid. And this is the story of this town. Got Stranger it. things. Yeah. That are happening. I could see now, I may they- have like an eerie Stephen King vibe, kind of like uh, The Outsider or something like that. But I was genuinely surprised. Like it came off as a creature feature. Yeah. Because he's going through the woods, blah, blah, blah. And he's gone. We really don't know what happened to him, but he's fucking gone. Mm-hmm. And that right there had me hooked. As soon as that happened, I'm like, I gotta know. Yeah, I gotta know what happened. Um, and like that, that happens within the span of like 20 minutes. Yeah, and the episodes are about an hour long. Mm-hmm. Um, but we also because we get at that point introduced to uh, Will's mom, Joyce. Yes, when Ona Ryder shows up, she's yes. like, "Hey, I'm looking for my son." She wakes up her older son. Hey, where's Will? And he's very protective of his older of his younger brother. He oh, is yeah. uh, because he's so small. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I do love the trailer showing like he is fucking massive. Like he, <laughs> he looks like a basketball player. <laughs> um, but they're like, "Let me go see. Maybe he's hiding out because you're starting to feed into the backstory of the character." Yeah. Hey, where's their dad? Their dad's a piece of shit. Yep. And they're like, okay, maybe he's hiding out in his clubhouse. And the mom, you know, you could tell she's done this before. Mm -hmm. So she goes out into the woods, goes to his clubhouse, and she's talking to him like he's there, but he's not there. And that, and that's a kick in the fucking stomach right there, especially for a parent. Jesus Christ! And she goes to town. Yeah. And she goes to town and looks, sees Jim Hopper, and I love Jim Hopper. He is the quintessential horror movie sheriff. Yes. You don't like him. He's like, I need my coffee. I need my cigarettes. I ate steak and watched Three's Company all night. I just want to he be left alone. He is worse for Jones, just yeah. with a little less racism. There's no Vietnamese, Vietnamese <laughs> restaurant in Hawkins. <laughs> no way it's shilling out a little bit of powder. But uh, anyway, it's it, it feels it feels like you're going to hate him. And I did. I didn't like him in the beginning. I'm just like, dude, there's a fucking missing kid. But you know, there. And I think that's what wound up making me like him even more as the seasons went on because he had such a good character arc. Yeah, and you know, you're watching this, and then we start getting some sci-fi vibes uh, because I believe that the next part is when they start showing Eleven. Yes, because uh, we kind of get another little uh, quick send off to the Hawkins Laboratory. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is an unseen uh, government laboratory because we actually see a little bit of the uh, face hugger type uh, creatures. What are they called? The demogorgons. Demogorgons. Yeah, demogorgons. It's, it's a it's a villain in the uh, Dungeons and Dragons series. Yes, and uh, actually, funny enough, they're actually. I feel like this next season is going to play into the, how many Dungeons and Dragons references they've made throughout the series. Yes, because in the trailer you do see a new dungeon master. Uh huh. So there's a little bit of theory going around of like, well, maybe if these are his ideas and stories that are coming mm-hmm. to play. Yeah. So it, there's so a lot of we'll, we'll, so we'll we'll speculation. Yeah. So we'll definitely have to talk about any Dungeons and Dragons references that pop up because they may be important later on. Just, I'm just ready, ready to hit a line, 
crank some journey and just fucking watch that shit all the way through know, because right? you know it's all coming out at once it's not it's not episode it's by episode not they're splitting it in two parts boo. two Netflix, parts boo. it's still boo. it's still gonna be nine episodes i'm but trying to keep split- up with content already god damn it. <laughs> but they're but i feel like they're gonna leave us on a cliffhanger mid mm. uh because i let's see it it was on the previous page. Yeah, the first batch is coming out May 27th. The second batch is coming out July 1st. So we don't have a lot of time between it, but I feel mm-hmm. like they're splitting it on purpose. I feel like something major is going to happen in the last few episodes that they want suspense built for. Mm-hmm. Either way. Uh, so, <laughs> Jumping way far ahead of that So point. we get the uh, young girl who shows up at the diner. Yes. This is the tail end of the episode. Mm-hmm. Um so things are moving forward with the cops. You know they're they're dragging their feet, but uh, Eleven. Now we find out eventually that's her name. Yes, uh, shows up at the diner, and this is what gave me mm. this. I don't know if you've ever read Firestarter. Yeah, I, uh, no, I haven't. But uh, or Carrie, uh, definitely the Stephen King, the the little girl storyline in the horror genre this is what gave it the biggest vibe, because in Firestarter it's a little girl and she's the most dangerous motherfucker in that entire book. She's a nuclear weapon just walking around. And that's what she is. She's a weapon that's walking around. And and also, it's it's rough to watch almost because of what happens. And, and, and it's partly because uh, the cop that was shown was Benny. And mm-hmm. Benny was a good guy. Like, mm-hmm. he was genuinely trying to help. So it was like when he died, you kind of was like, oh, yeah. oh, poor Benny. <laughs> yeah. And this is what gets Hopper riled the fuck up. Yes. And we start getting just a little bit of backstory on Hopper. You know, he had a wife. He had a daughter who died. You know, we're getting just a little bit because, you know, because she makes a comment in these episode two, going into episode two. She's like, you had a kid. Wouldn't you want someone to look for them? And that's he's like, you shut the fuck up. Because that's when he starts bucking up a little bit. He uh-huh. he shaves. <laughs> you know, he just well, and th- <clears throat> that's the reason I said I feel like he already had such a good uh, character arc. Is within episode one, you've already gotten all his assholeness out of the way, mm-hmm. and then you had Renoda White Rider just being like, "Fuck you, do your fucking job, asshole." Yeah. And then he was just like, "All right." Nice. And then it's like, and then he does the good thing. So it's like from that moment on, mm-hmm. he's working on his character. And I'm just like, yes, <laughs> love this guy. And going into uh, episode two, the weirdo on Maple Street, which yes. is a pull from the Twilight Zone, uh, and also a little bit of a play on words for like Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. Uh, but it's ET. Yeah, it they, is. They found someone. It's a group of friends, and it's like, what do we do? We hide them. Yeah. <laughs> we feed them, and then we hide yeah, them. Yeah, because uh, at the very end of it, um, because uh, Joyce's uh, phone short circuits after receiving a mysterious call, call that she believes to be from Will, calling her from the upside down. And then uh, while searching for Will in the woods, Mike, Dustin, and Lucas come across Eleven. And that's like the E.T. moment of like, ah! <laughs> Yeah, and for some reason, uh, Mike decides he's like, fuck it, she can just live in my closet. No one will ever notice that. <laughs> and this and this is where we meet uh, the dad, Will's yeah. dad. They're in Indianapolis. Uh, he goes out there. He's like, hey, you know, your fucking kid's missing. You need to help. And the dad, being a piece of shit, takes off. Yep. Um, but this is where the search party kind of situation happens. This is like if this was a horror movie, this would be mid horror movie. Yeah, you know, and this Eleven's being like the bad men are after me. Yeah, yeah, yeah the bad men, and then it's just like, hey, you know, Will? Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah. She's like, yeah, I saw him. Mm-hmm. And it's like, where, where the fuck is he? And she's like, I can't say. Yeah, she can't. She really can't. She. It's. It's. How do you describe it? Yeah, the upside down that we come to. Like, yeah, but it's like, what the fuck? And this is when it kind of changed my head a little bit. I'm just like, okay, it's going to be, it's going to be sci-fi. All right. Maybe, maybe there is a killer killer. You know, maybe it's a beast of some sort, same right. kind of situation. Cause we already saw a monster at the very beginning of it. Yes. The Demogorgon. Yeah. And, um, this is when Hopper starts finding pieces of 11. Yes. Through the woods. Um, and this is, they use a, they use uh, eleven to describe where Will's out using a Dungeons and Dragons field. Map. Yes, <laughs> which is brilliant as hell. Yeah, and it really incorporates you know what they have mm-hmm. into using what they know. Yes, uh, and it goes it goes a long way. Um, and they kind of find out that she has like telekinesis abilities. Mm-hmm. 
and this is starting when we start getting a little bit more into our side characters. So mm-hmm. Nancy, uh, Mike's older sister, yep. and her friend Barb. Now, <laughs> I have never... We've seen fans get mad. Yes. With mainstay <laughs> characters. Like... When they killed Brian on yes. Family Guy. Yes. Fucking brutal. Yeah. And then a dickish response from Seth MacFarlane. He's like, well, it was there to prove a lesson that, you know, you don't know what you've got till it's gone. It's like, no, fuck you, Seth. <laughs> Seth, that's one of your many voices. It's still there, ain't it? That's your regular voice. That, that's his regular voice. I feel like it was a little bit of projecting. He just wanted to kill himself. I'm surprised death, that motherfucker. Death the Family Guy. I'm surprised he hasn't developed a horrible mental illness. But uh, <laughs> Maybe he go, does. But like we've seen mainstay characters die, especially, let's go to Spider-Man. Spoilers alert. Aunt May gets it. Yeah. That's rough to watch. And I played the fucking PS4 game. <laughs> and, it's, and it happens and, there, too. And it's like, God Damn, out of left field with a mm-hmm. baseball bat. Just bam, bam, bam. <laughs> and you and you kind of feel for Barb. They ugly fire her a lot. Yeah. They make her they like do. this dumpy, nerdy girl. And like if you've ever seen what Barb really looks like, it's like, God, you guys did a lot of fucking work to make her look ugly. Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, like, yeah. like she's a smoke show outside the show. <laughs> but they go to the party and Barb's feeling left out. Now we see Barb in the season or uh, episode one, mm-hmm. going into episode two. Yeah, and you're like, all right, Barb's her best friend, and Nancy shows no ill will toward Barb. Mm-hmm. Uh, even her boyfriend knows not to fuck with Barb a little bit. Yeah, right. but they do go to a party. It goes on to another thing, mm-hmm. and. This is where I kind of like the dynamic of the older brother. Yeah. Uh, John is like, he's in, he's still in the woods. He's still in the woods looking for his brother. And he's like a photographer. He gives off this creepy Ed Furlong vibe. <laughs> and, he did. And I'm just like, okay, that's cool. And then Nancy dips with yep. her boyfriend in the house. And Barb's all by herself. And then she's then, like, fuck this. Yeah, but she's like just sitting there beside the pool. And I'm like, this is another mm-hmm. wheel situation. And oh my God. Just the end of that episode is here's something what she turns around blackness. Yep. They pulled a fucking Sopranos at the end of it. I'm just like, you motherfuckers. And my friend, she watched that. She's like, fuck that. That's <laughs> fucking bullshit. And I'm just like, you've known her for one episode. And like, to this day, fans are like that's Justice, the one I was talking about. Justice, Justice for, for Barb. Barb. <laughs> so, uh, funny story. I did loot crate. Yeah. I was getting loot crates around that time, dude. I got a Stranger Things loot crate, and it was a beach towel, and it was an eighties like Vogue fucking towel, uh-huh. and it said Justice for Barb on it, and it was her on it. Oh but it was my like god! That weird like white, pink, blue pastel yeah, yeah, design yeah. on it. And I gave it to a friend. I'm like, here, here's Barb. <laughs> Yeah, and that was the thing. I thought she was going to, like, her death was going to be a much more important role in the series. No. No, because it is, and it's. Like, it kind of looms over the first season a little bit. Kind of just like the kids are all acknowledging that Barb is dead, but, like, that's about the extent of it. It was just like, oh, she's mm-hmm. dead. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but going, in, like, it picks right up the second after, and see, episode three is. She's in the Upside Down. Yep. And you're like, okay. Now you're finally getting a vibe for what this is. So now we see what it looks like. We see the kind of area we're working with. And you're like, okay, Barb, let's let's, let's figure this out. Mm -hmm. It's an evil version of the town. Yeah, but I'm thinking like, okay, it's going to be an A and B plot now. You know, A plot, main character trying to figure shit out, B plot trying to survive. Right. Two minutes later, zip. Yep. They killed her. I'm just like, God (laughs) damn. As out if, the gate as if her first death scene wasn't enough now we get a second one <laughs> yeah and this is like right after is when Joyce uh, the mom realizes that Will's still alive yeah and communicating through Christmas lights which mm-hmm. I thought was very elaborate oh that was so cool and you get a lot of the uh, the justification in it in season 2 and 3 yeah but the ability to do it is mm-hmm. fucking awesome well see that real quick that was one thing that I was looking, I was hoping they were going to do more in season three, which was explaining how communication through 
the upside down to the real world works more. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, I would love to see how Will interacted with the upside down to make the Christmas lights flicker like that. Because we've already established that the upside down is like its own entity. Mm -hmm. There's not like, you know, versions of the real world happening in the upside down. So it's not like you would have had almost like a hologram or a shadow Joyce in the room. Mm -hmm. Will would have been by himself in the room. We've also seen how some of those rooms can be set up different. Mm -hmm. Seeing how he was able to do the lights like that to make it work is just something that just, I don't know. I guess it's just like, suspend your imagination, motherfucker. But also yeah. at the same time, it's like, you've gone through so many details of explaining so many other things. That would be a cool thing to know. <laughs> uh, then we get Carrie Ells. Yes. Uh, as Dr. Brenner. Mm -hmm. um, and he's trying, he, he plays along with Hopper. Bren Brenner's cool. I the, like he's him. The, he's the CIA doctor. Yeah. And you're just like, oh god damn it, <laughs> this MK Ultra, and I'm just like, all right, that's cool. It makes it makes a really good, compelling story, right? And I'm just and I'm and I love Hopper like digging deep in it, and because mm -hmm. he finds Eleven's mom, yeah, and it's a heartbreaking story because hey, the mom lives with her sister, and she's basically fucking comatose, yeah, the whole time, mm -hmm. but she's still kind of connected, yeah, in yeah. that weird way, yeah, and. It's it's so fucked up because Eleven calls her like Papa or Dad or some shit, uh -huh. and it's just like he's been torturing this girl for so long, going into it, uh -huh. and it it gives you a lot of backstory of just the uh, the secret parts of it. Mm -hmm. uh, but going back to like the high school the next day, it's it's the brother Will's brother. Yep, is the high school, and he wants to talk to Nancy about. Barb, because he saw Barb disappear, and he mm -hmm. can't explain it, because he took a photo. She's there, then she's not. Yep. Um, and this is where we get. Uh, was it Mike? No. What's the uh, What's the boyfriend's name? Uh, Steve. Steve. Steve, the greatest single mom in television. <laughs> uh, Talk about someone else that had another great character kick arc. Ass arc. Yes. Yeah. His arc was a lot better than the uh, guy who shows up in season two and three. <laughs> God damn, that dude was rough. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, nah, Steve, just being a quintessential bully asshole, you know, he's the jock guy, everything, and Nancy defends him. Nancy mm -hmm. Nancy defends, oh boy. And um, this is where it goes back to Joyce for a minute, um, where jo uh, Joyce finally figures out how to, how to communicate with Will yeah. through the Christmas lights. Yeah, she's, um, she basically writes a alphabet next to every, uh, next to like a certain uh, lights, and he's just like, "All right, hey." So, so and, and that's the bit that I want to really see how they how he worked that out. And then, then at the end of the episode, the boys are using eleven to try to find Will, and uh -huh. they end up going to the quarry. Uh, but they see them pull out a body mm -hmm. of Will. Yep, and. You're like, God damn, like, what the fuck is going on? Like, is this just some bullshit? And, and that's when it kind of... If they didn't do the thing with Barb, if they didn't start the episode out with Barb yeah. getting took, I think it would have been more compelling to show it later because you're like, well, something's out there. Mm -hmm. Is Will really alive? <coughs> you know, because showing the upside down so early kind of gives you the thing, oh, he is alive. He's able to communicate. Barb got killed, but... Will's still alive, right? But if they hadn't shown that, I think mm -hmm. it made it more probably made it more compelling to when they pull the body out. It's like, it's no. like, oh wait, it's like no, there's no way in hell he could have survived. And whatever the fuck Joyce is seeing could have been a little bit more uh, malevolent. It could have been more evil. Yeah, whatever the fuck she was talking to. Mm -hmm. And I think that would have been a cool, a cool way to hide it a little oh, bit, yeah. a little bit longer. Because like when I first saw that episode, I'm like, that's a fucking mannequin. That's <laughs> 
The government did that shit. <laughs> the man. The man did it. Now, real quick, uh, when I was just like, oh, yeah, I like uh, Brenner. I thought uh, that was the dopey uh, father character that you didn't you didn't have any faith in until like the very end. Now, uh, Brenner is played by uh, Carrie Hills. Okay, yeah, Carrie yeah, yeah. I remember Carrie Hills is the uh, blonde doctor. Yeah. Uh, the other guy you're talking about is the government supervisor guy. He wasn't mad about you. Uh, yeah, but he like winds up being like he believes the kids, and mm-hmm. it's just like no, but let's do this, this, and this. That's yeah. the guy that I yeah. thought you were talking about. Yeah, he plays a bigger role in season three. Yeah, um, but he's he's throughout the whole sh- show. No, th- this is a guy that was like really interested and then immediately died. Mm. No, I'm not talking about him. Uh, Brenner. But yeah, either way, Brown. I'm not thinking yeah. of Brenner. That's okay. all I want to say. Um, <laughs> it's like I started thinking. I was like, wait a minute. Nope, that's not it. And this one gave off a really like murder documentary vibe mm-hmm. a little bit because it's like Joyce is refusing to believe it you know her yeah, boys the chapter uh, episode four yeah episode four the body um, now this one's actually pretty quick to go through because um, it's mid-season yeah it's mid-season you're not really doing much um, but she was able to wind up uh, getting uh, Mike's voice to work through a walkie-talkie mm-hmm. yes uh, and they're able to speak to him to a to an extent. And this kind of pissed off a lot of fans because they're like, "Oh, that, that, that's a late '80s walkie-talkie." I was like, "Shut the fuck up, <laughs> nerds, nerds." <laughs> and um, then, uh, and then you can find out Levin could use a ham radio mm-hmm. uh, to communicate with Will. Yeah. Uh, then later on, and this is this is what I like is the mom, Will's uh, not Will's mom, but uh, Mike's mom mm-hmm. and Nancy's mom. Because she's she is a character actor, yeah. But she's also part of like college humor, like early days. But like seeing her in this, I was laughing my ass off because all I could think of was like the the the, the paranoid stewardess. Mm-hmm. But she was just like, "Hey, Nancy, Barb's missing," and Nancy's like, "Uh, what?" And it's like, "No, you know she's missing because she was last with you, dumb bitch." <laughs> like, I didn't like Nancy going into this a lot. Because she's kind of a bitch. <laughs> but, you know, with the whole body, hey, they found the buyer's boy. Hey, how you doing, Mike? You know, they, she, you see, like, they're trying to connect with them, and the dad's just like, hey, son, how you doing? <laughs> you know, like, newspaper. Yeah. <laughs> and they're just like, oh, God, this is the lamest motherfucker in the show. The dad. And they, yeah. make, they make him that way. They make him, like, this blind character almost. Mm-hmm. Um, two lines of dialogue every other episode yeah, yeah if that yeah and does nothing to add to the story other than later on in season three yeah um for different reasons but now this is one of my favorite scenes it's toward the end so hopper starts believing uh went on the writer's story yeah because at first he's just like bullshit yeah it's like okay all right i'll see i'll go do i'll go to the morgue and i'll do it now there's a cool fucking like Easter egg in there. The the security guard standing outside the morgue while mm-hmm. Hopper's walking up. And now he's walking with some force. Right? Oh yeah. He's like, Oh man. He's like, Hey, I need to get in there. He's like, uh, I can't I can't let you in there. He's like, Oh man. Okay. He's reading the the security guard's reading Cujo yeah. by Stephen King about the dog. He's like, yeah. Hey, crazy story about that dog, huh? He's like, Yeah, and wham, right in the fucking face. <laughs> Bam! Right in the god damn. He's like crazy thing about that dog. Bow! And he just barges in, and he realizes it's a fake body. Yes. And now the conspiracy widens. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> Windmills, Katy Perry. It's all a shame. Anunnaki. Anunnaki. <laughs> the milestone isn't really real. <laughs> it's a portal to the fifth dimension. Yeah. Without gentrification. <laughs> All right, then we roll into episode five where uh, Hopper searches the lab, finding the substance in the basement. Uh, finding, yes, yeah, finding the substance in the basement before being knocked out by the lab's guards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then at that point, it's like espionage. Yeah. <laughs> and then I like, so they have the teacher. Yeah. There was the teacher that the kids talked to in the AV club, and it's just like that may have been who I was thinking of. I don't know. Are you thinking about Winona Ryder's like boyfriend who gets no? Gets he gets he gets got like in the uh, at the very end. I'm not thinking of him. 
I don't know. season two. Yeah. I don't know. Fuck it. Oh, I well. know. They, 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 they set him up and sit him down, man. Yeah. Oh, that, that I felt bad for that guy, too. Oh, Samwise. Yeah. From fucking Lord of the Rings. Uh-huh. Uh, you did him dirty, you pieces of shit. <laughs> that was another one. Justice for so-and-so. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Mr. Clark, that was the teacher. Yeah. Um, so, this is the part where uh, Hopper also realizes he's been bugged. Uh-huh. Um, the boys are right the whole time. Um, they find out, you know, about the electromagnetic field and best way to, you know, work with Eleven. Um, then Eleven has that memory of being put in a sensory deprivation chamber. Because mm-hmm. in the previous episode, the reason why uh, the, uh, Mike's voice was getting channeled through the um, uh, uh, walkie-talkie is because Eleven was, like, not talking to them. And, like, that was, like, her first way of, like, re-communicating. And they are like, oh, shit, she can, like, take voices and put it through that. So they kind of started discovering in the earlier episode how she can slowly start pumping voices through things. And they're like, okay, she can work off you know electricity and you know that kind of shit which is an interesting power move yeah um so she gets scared thinking about trying to find mike or Mm -hmm. uh, will because she remembers seeing the demigorgon yeah so while the boys are out she kind of leads them a different direction Mm -hmm. Uh, and this is where mike and lucas fight it out yeah and she's like, hey, knock it the fuck off and throws lucas off that motherfucker Mm -hmm. and this is what kind of it was kind of like a dividing point in the series because you know Lucas is like man fuck this bullshit I'm yeah. out and Mike's like I'm a cent bro yeah I'm, <laughs> I'm that 10 to that 11 bro <laughs> she's my number one I'm her 10 <laughs> aww. aww um so 11 takes off yeah um but Nancy and John formulate a plan to kill the Demogorgon while searching in the woods mm-hmm. which I thought was like okay Let's just see how that works out. Yeah. Uh, they end up going to the upside down. Um, if I remember right, Nancy ends up going through uh, the upside down and seeing it. Yeah. Just for like a minute. Mm-hmm. Because oh. they, they found an interesting way to make the portals. It's like, basically, it was like just like glowing goo. And it's like, if you, you picked at it the right way, you could get into it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, this one does the same thing as all the other episodes. Picks up the second after because cliffhanger. Yay! Uh, so Jonathan pulls Nancy out of the fucking uh, underneath under yep. under upside down, uh, but she doesn't want to be alone, so he stays with her. Now mm-hmm. this this ends up being a fucking problem because uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Will? Mm-hmm. Not Will. Uh, the boyfriend shows up. Oh, Steve. Steve. He's got such a bland name. It's fucking weird. His name's not like Flash or something. Like, I know. Flash or Terry the Killer. <laughs> but yeah, no. Uh, he finds out. Yeah. And I'm just like, hey, you know that guy you kicked the shit out of? He's fucking your girlfriend. Hey. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, this is uh, Steve attempting to reconcile with Nancy. Uh, sees them together through the window and assumes they're dating. And uh, yeah, at that point, Joyce and Hopper track down to uh, where... Terry Ives, who's catatonic. Uh, That's Eleven's mom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And then uh, th- that was a really interesting scene where this, like, you finally got to see all that. And it was like, yeah. fuck. Uh, yeah. Because she was an MK Ultra participant. Yeah. Um, and then we see, you know, Nancy and Jonathan start stockpiling weapons, which I thought was fucking hilarious because yep. one's got a shotgun and Nancy just pulls out like this little fucking pig sticker pistol. I'm just like, where'd you get a gun, bitch? Like, <laughs> like I'm surprised that it wasn't like a sawed off shotgun that I she know. has found. And she's like, oh yeah, I'm fucking blasting this motherfucker. Um, but this is when Steve shows up and fucking starts fighting. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh fuck no well dude. it was after uh, he called Nancy a slut yeah and he was like I ain't having this yeah <laughs> um so Eleven's back on her own again she's you know shoplifting Ego waffles yeah Pirate which of course stuff. turns into a huge brand deal where I'm yeah. sure Ego's stock skyrocketed oh yeah um so she get uh, the boys get uh, ambushed by the this damn is, bullies this is the uh the uh basketball court scene yes and she beats the fuck out of this kid yes and, and they're just like break his arm <laughs> break do it. it do it i had the same i had the, watching that i had the same feeling when i was watching the uh winter soldier falcon thing and i'm just like 
break his fucking arm. <laughs> take that take that goddamn shield back and break his motherfucking arm. <laughs> Snap. <laughs> Uh, and it really gives you a good vibe of what the fuck she could do. Yeah. Just like on a regular person, much less like a monster that we see later on. And then it's kind of like the baby Yoda syndrome where mm-hmm. after she did it, she's now like fully like decharged and like really weak. She starts bleeding through her nose. That's where you get that really famous photo with the drop of blood coming out and everything else. Um, and this also is she tells Mike that she accidentally turned the Gorgon loose. Mm-hmm. The Demogorgon. Yeah. Um, and then it kicks in because uh, Lucas ends up seeing that, hey, man, the government's coming to your house, Mike. Yeah. Um, so Mike and the boys, you know, they flee the house, but the house is being, like, strip searched and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is what I like about the, like, toward the end of every season mm-hmm. is it's it's high velocity. Yeah. You know. Yeah, because now we're in uh, episode seven and they only had, what, uh, eight episodes? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and now it's like, all right, how do we explain the separation of the adults and the kids? Yeah, because we got to keep them we separated. Separate, and this one was the government separating them because they're looking for the kids. Yeah. And I love the mom and dad. He's like, and the dad kind of steps up and was like, nah, you need to back the fuck up. Yeah. And I'm just like, <laughs> now? Now you're getting fucking aggravated when the fucking man shows up? <laughs> well, prick. of course, it's a traditional <laughs> yeah. late 70s, 80s dad. Yeah. Um, I don't give a fuck about my family, but fuck you, government. <laughs> so they're all at the buyer's house, right? Yeah. And um, it's Joyce and Hopper realize Eleven is Jane Ives' kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, the group ask Eleven if they can search for Will and Barb. He, she can't really find Barb because she's dead. Yeah. Uh, they break into the middle school and they make, shift, and they make the, uh, the tub. Oh, yeah. They make that tub thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's where Eleven finds Barb's dead body and Will's alive using telepathy. Yeah. Um, which I also thought was a pretty cool little he's trick. He's been hiding in his own fort, mm-hmm. which is kind of like a go-to, you know, in the beginning of the uh, show. Yeah. Um, so we start from the beginning. Um, realizing that uh, the gate in the basement in the lab, Hopper and Joyce break into the lab, but apprehend, are apprehended by security guards. Uh Nancy and Jonathan head back to the buyer's house, planning to attract. And whoop the, some ass! And whoop some ass! <laughs> but that's where uh, Steve showed up. Yeah, because Steve was waiting for him, mm-hmm. and he's got that you know, that bully vibe. And I'm just like, okay, okay. Uh, and this is where we get a lot of more flashbacks. This episode doesn't begin like straight second no. after. This one begins with a flashback. Well, episode eight, yeah, yeah. Uh, begins with a flashback with uh, Hopper and his dead kid. Yeah, so let's just go ahead and give you another one last good gut punch as we're heading on out of here. <laughs> um, so Eleven offers to give herself up if they, you know she, they turn them loose. Hopper and Joyce enter the Upside Down to rescue Nancy and Jonathan. Uh, to rescue Will, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Nancy and Jonathan are still in the top mm-hmm. top world. Um, they tr- attract the Demi Gorgon by cutting one of their hands. Uh Steve arrives <laughs> just <laughs> as the Demogorgon's like rolling up and intended to apologize to Jonathan about their fight. Steve and Nancy and Jonathan fight the Demogorgon. And I love Jonathan's like go to is a baseball bat with nails in it. Yeah. I'm just like, that's illegal as fuck <laughs> to have. You think you haven't get caught with a gun's bat? Get caught with a baseball bat in the uh-huh. truck. Uh, they're going to put you downtown. Um, so the boys are there still in the middle school. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, they're they're being chased by the other agents in the middle school, and Eleven kind of murders all of them. <laughs> like, kind of out the gate, just murders the shit out of them. Yeah. Um. So the Demogorgon ends up finally appearing again and kills Brenner. Right. Carrie Ells. Mm-hmm. Um. Hopper and Joyce find Will in the Upside Down, and they fucking take off. Uh, he's got that shit on him. He's got that black shit yeah, on him. He's dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like, you think he's dead. Um, they do CPR, blah, blah, blah. Now, the Demogorgon somehow finds the kids. And this is where we get that cool scene where she pins it up against the wall. <laughs> and it slowly starts disintegrating. And mm-hmm. she's killing it down to the fucking atom. Uh, now, this... So, we'll, so, this is kind of like the end of the story. Right. All right. So, the Demogorgon's gone. Will's in the hospital. And we get the one month follow up. Right. Eleven had disappeared. We're doing the one month out. Um, 
Nancy's back with Steve, uh, and both are friends with Jonathan the whole right. time, right? Uh, but Will coughs up one of those fucking slug <laughs> things, and it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> and that means it's not over. Yeah. Uh, but he hides it. Yeah. And this is also where we see... I and that and that was the moment also I'm sitting here going like, no, you little bitch. Don't hide that. Kill it. Don't hide... No, no. You're fucking it up. Well, no, you're spits, fucking it up. Yeah, he spits it out and Dustin ends up finding it later on. Yeah. But uh, going into the preview for season two after this, Eleven is roaming the woods mm-hmm. and there's the box in the in the winter. Yep. Co- with covered in snow with egos yep and you can find out that um uh hopper was the one leaving them there but you'll learn more about that on our next episode <laughs> about the strangest of stranger of, potatoes of stranger potatoes <laughs> coming every wednesday stranger potatoes <laughs> Strang- <laughs> what would those be like molded sweet potatoes <laughs> no you can take a strange potato it's just a potato with a root growing out of it you just chuck like Kobe that shit into the dirt and it's gross <laughs> what was probably uh, your favorite kill Barb the- <laughs> <laughs> not character from downtown <laughs> <laughs> uh, but just kind of like in general oh, favorite kill probably the fucking agents getting massacred in the halls yeah I'm just like you know what you got. Like you made this. You made this, and it's just like it's a walkie-talkie nuclear weapon. Like, <laughs> who eats egos? No, I, honestly, I liked. Uh, I like the overall kills, and the reason why I liked is they. This was also one of the few shows that still really does a lot of practical effects. Mm-hmm. They don't rely heavily on CG, and I didn't fully realize that. I thought they just had like. It was kind of that weird low budget CG where it's like you ate, colored it the right way and kind of lit it the right way. It looked a lot more believable. But to hearing some behind the scenes stuff on even season four that's coming up, yeah. they were talking about how they wanted like the main monster to be as practical as possible. And like the only CG element are like the tendrils, but like it's a full body suit and shit like that. So I think that's one of the other reasons why it really, because everything we've talked about in this series. And I think it's the reason why we even kind of blew through the episodes so quick is because not a single episode goes by that's not a traditional horror movie trope. Yeah. Every last bit. There's technically not a scrap of, quote, original content in this thing. Straight from ripping off Demogorgons from uh, Dungeons and Dragons to every single horror and, you know, suspense thriller trope possible. All in this first season. Yeah. But... It's the way they did it. Mm. No property combined all of those elements at the same time. And I think if the production value of the classic 70s, 80s, early 90s VFX style weren't in play, if they were just if they made this like a current piece, I don't think this would have been nearly as popular. Because we still could have easily done this set in a current day. You know, whole bunch of nerds that are maybe '80s fans mm. that still get together and play classic Dungeons and Dragons. We we could still have this whole '80s vibe, but it's still set today. And I don't think it would still work I, as well. I it's think, the camera choices, the color grading, the time period, everything. It wouldn't work today just because everything that happens in that series no longer happens. None of it happens. Those kids leaving their houses at night, meeting up, leaving late at night to go back to their houses, mm-hmm. that shit didn't fly after 1990. You're right. That shit did not fucking fly. My parents would freak the fuck out. Like I said, we had it, a little bit of it in Gaffney, but nothing crazy. But like, they, if I go to my buddy's house, who was like down the road, quarter mile, if I didn't get back home at a certain time, they're calling everybody. Oh, yeah. Like, I'd walk there and walk back. Mm -hmm. But I would call and be like, hey, I'm on my way back. I'm coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I never was out to the middle of the fucking night. (laughs) No, that is. No, not definitely not. It was always till you know, when sun's starting to set, you might, you find your way back home. Let me go ahead and start kicking rocks up the road. Yeah. Uh, But holy shit. Like, it, it goes to show the like fly by night attitude that we see in like Action Park, Mm -hmm. Lashkey kids. Yep. Fucking just, 
be bopping down the fucking road to danger. <laughs> you know, and, and that's, that's all these fucking kids are. Yeah. It's dangerous little fucks running around. <laughs> and I love it. I fucking love it. No, and like and like we said at the very beginning of it, I think the thing that really adds to it is, you know, a few of the adult characters maybe we've seen in a few things, but mm-hmm. none of the kid characters are actors rather. We've they're all unknowns. Yeah. And they all each knocked it out of the park. It wasn't like you had, you know, three strong kids and then like that one kid actor that's kinda, you know, half ass in it. Mm-hmm. Every one of them killed it. And mm-hmm. I think for the fact that they even became friends before filming because they even kind of it saw the importance of that being like, well, this is supposed to be a close friends buddy TV show. Like, we kind of need to like get to know each other and actually become friends, and that's exactly what they did. So they became friends even before the show started, so they could have that natural chemistry. And at, right after this, the, the boom for these fucking explosion. kids explosion. Mike ends up in Stranger Things. Mm-hmm. One of the funniest, or ends up in uh, It. Yeah, Chapter One. One of the funniest goddamn children characters in the whole fucking show. Turns super serious. Turns super serious, and like it's so fucking good. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Millie Bobby Brown ended up doing like uh, voice work. Uh, she ended up just the Godzilla movies the Godzilla movies uh, the first one yeah uh, was uh, King of All Monsters yeah um, and it worked out really good you know uh, Har- Hopper ended up going a bit further mm-hmm. went on a rider ended up doing a couple more movies uh, which kind of started her stuff back and all the other people are having a blast and it reminds you of like if you see one you're going to see another one yep in like the same context like they're both like it's kind of like uh when you saw actors from other shows appear in other favorite shows because the studio was right there. Yep. Uh, so it kind of gives off that vibe. Game of Thrones is the same shit uh, <laughs> where like, hey, I saw three people from Game of Thrones in the same movie. Yeah, because it's filmed on the same fucking lot as Game of Thrones. <laughs> like they needed actors. <laughs> yeah. No, so it, it honestly surprised me. I thought it was just going to be a lot more normy than yeah. it actually was. And the first season has a lot of like replay value oh yeah even though you know what happens it's got that it, it's it's a small small town mm-hmm. as the season progresses it gets bigger and bigger but the small town i mean has, we only see like what three or four locations in season one yeah roughly roughly yeah outside of like you know maybe a one or two shot exterior or like we got to make a quick pit stop to over here but like the season main two is when it expands into a lot other bigger. locations they're uh, out of town um and we'll get to it when like nancy and jonathan are doing their conspiracy hunting and they end up meeting that dude in the fucking woods with the bunker yep and, and then we get the hilarious. stranger things season three mall rats yeah mall rats. <laughs> but not season four dun dun <laughs> but now that season four fucking journey hits here we stand. <laughs> <laughs> and like they break it up so well. Like I was, I kind of, I didn't, I refused to watch the trailer because it's going to ruin it. And then you showed it to me. I'm just like, I, I, we're watching it again. <laughs> we did. We, we watched, watched it, it a second time. I, I was just like, the cut of the song was done good enough for me to watch it. Everything else is just icing on the cake. Yeah, I was like, I'll give you a chance to watch the season four trailer of Stranger Things. Yes. Tune in next time when we do this for season two when we meet the racist Red Ranger from Power Rangers <laughs> with a kick-ass mullet blasted fuck in a fucking badass car. He's he's so likable, but fuck, I hate him. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I know. He, he, it's the best duality character possible. He reminds me of the bad kid from fucking Karate Kid. He really does. Swoop the leg. And he fucking, instead of sweep the leg, it's like, kill the black kid. It's like, that's, <laughs> and it's like, it scares the shit out of you that you got to root for this motherfucker. But he's such an asshole. Oh, God. Well, for this uh, Stranger uh, Brotatoes episode, I've been Alex. No cap. And no cap. And Chris, do you have any sort of final thoughts for us? Cap's going to be on the next show. I'm going to force him to watch every fucking episode, every last goddamn minute. There'll be quizzes. <laughs> There'll be quizzes. <laughs> Crank some journey. Go watch the new fucking season. Watch the last season. <laughs> Just do it. Do it. 